Imagine spending billions on a missile that outruns Mach 5, yet can't beat an 18-month paperwork delay. The hypersonic attack cruise missile, HACM, was slated for 2027, but GAO now pegs first combat rounds in 2029 after the Air Force acts two of seven test shots to save cash. If the clock is the real killer, why race for hypersonic at all? June 11th's GAO scorecard detonated a hard truth. The rapid-fire HACM now tracks a 12-year march from contract to combat, an average that just ballooned 18 months in one report cycle. Here's the forensic trail. A six-month slip in the first design review forced Raytheon and the Air Force to slash flight tests from seven to five, burning schedule margin the program never had. The ripple is brutal. AO notes initial fielding slides toward the tail end of FY27, but the decision for full rate production and real war stock numbers now falls in FY29 pushing true initial operational capability to the brink of the next decade. If paperwork beats Mach 5 hardware, what else gets bent out of shape? Spoiler, the cost curve is already creaking. Budget bleed up next. The watchdog's June audit didn't just flag a schedule slip. It detonated the cost column. Raytheon now warns it will significantly exceed the original baseline, with GAO pegging total development at almost $2 billion and climbing. Follow the money trail, Air Force R1 tables show HACM's RDT and E request rocketed from $333 million. In fiscal year 24 to $803 million, in fiscal year 26, up 141% in two budget cycles. Program chiefs tried a quick tourniquet, axing two of seven flight tests to shave roughly $120 million. But fewer shots mean every launch now carries make or break risk. One dud could swallow the savings in seconds. Inflation isn't the lone culprit. Exotic nickel-based super alloys for the Northrop scramjet climb 38% year over year, and a single cracked combustor forces a full engine teardown. Multiply that across a still tiny industrial base, and the ledger bleeds faster than accounting can cauterize it. And the bill doesn't end at the factory gate. Each operational HACM is forecast to top $18 million per round, almost triple a JASM ER. Lawmakers are already asking if hypersonic range is worth cruise missile sticker shock. Next up, with cash drains and test slots shrinking, the test crunch looms. Five shots to prove the Air Force's fastest dart won't misfire in a real war. The Air Force just cut HACM's flight pallet almost in half, from seven end-to-end -end shots to only five, to claw back cash and calendar slack. Program officials assure GAO they can still declare confidence but every launch now represents 20% of the entire evidence file. One telemetry dropout and the stats melt. Why the squeeze? A six-month slip in the preliminary design review slid the first live shot, originally penciled for quarter one fiscal year 2025 over Australia's Woomera range into early 26, eating the cushion that hid behind the word rapid. With no room left for a scrub and reload, Raytheon now has to thread five perfect needles. Booster separation, scramjet light off, Mach 6 cruise, terminal maneuver, and data link pingback. Miss one and the missile could roll into production wearing an asterisk. Risk rose by the day. Northrop's combustor endurance test shows single digit margins before metal creep, and the supply chain still can't replace a cracked ceramic liner in under eight weeks. A flame out on shot number three would freeze the campaign until a fresh engine ships, and Congress is already hunting for reasons to yank funds. Two years ago, the Air Force swore the AGM 183 Alpha or Air Launched Rapid Response Weapon, ARRW, was officially dead after its last test fizzled and FY25 budget tables zeroed its line. Now the FY26 request slaps down $387 million to start buying missiles the service once buried. What changed? June 5th testimony from Chief of Staff General David Alvin. The Air Force will field two hypersonic lines. KTM for fighters and a larger strategic ARW for bombers, because both are getting into the procurement range in the very near future. Translation, HACM's 18-month slip forced a hedge. Pentagon briefers backstop the pivot, noting the FY26 top line pours $3.9 billion into hypersonics and restarts production of ARRW alongside Army LRHW batteries. Congress sees a safety net. Critics see a cash-burning zombie the Air Force can't quit, but resurrecting ARRW isn't plug-and-play. The missile's B-52 carriage mod kit still needs flight certification, and each round tips the scales near a JASM-X price tag. Worse, 
ARRW's Booster Glide profile overlaps China's new DF-27 class, raising questions about escalation ladders, hedge or hemorrhage. Either way, dual track means double the oversight hearings, just as Beijing unveils air-launched Mach 6 killers of its own. Next, range gap exposed. Can HACM or ARRW really outrun the Indo-Pak firing line? Every U.S. runway west of Hawaii is already under the gun. RAND's June Airbase Defense Review concludes China can strike all Indo-Pak airfields today. No future upgrades required. Beijing keeps adding reach. New imagery shows H-6K bombers hauling the KD-21 air-launched ballistic missile. Mach 6, roughly 1,500 kilometers of standoff. Analysts call it a carrier killer, but an Anderson killer works just as well. On the ground, the DF-27 glider just logged a 2,100-kilometer test hop, proving China can lob hypersonic arrows from mainland tunnels to Guam without leaving home turf. HACM's own spec hovers near 1,000 nautical miles, approximately 1,850 kilometers. Sounds long, until you realize F-15E launch jets must still punch inside the PLA's A-2AD dome to take the shot then run a 600-mile gauntlet back to tanker gas. With IOC now bumped to 2029, that gap gapes open four more years. If range is king, engines are the crown jewels, and Northrop's scramjet line is already redlined. Next, engine bottleneck. HACM's beating heart is built at exactly one address, Northrop's 60,000-square-foot hypersonic capability center in Elkton, Maryland. The plant lit its furnaces in 2023, yet company officials concede the throughput number is still an open question. In other words, the Air Force has no firm tally on how many engines per month the line can actually spit out. GAO's latest enterprise risk audit underlines why that guesswork hurts. Offensive hypersonic programs, including HACM, share a limited supplier industrial base. In some cases, only one vendor exists for specialized components. One bad alloy batch or cracked combustor can pause every missile on the assembly line. Northrop is pouring cash into a second building, a 57,000-square-foot propulsion innovation center that promises a 25% bump in advanced propulsion capacity by 2028. But the concrete is still drying, and scramjets remain a sliver of the workload competing with thousands of solid rocket orders. Until a rival producer stands up or Elton clones itself, HACM's war reserve shelf hinges on a single choke point. Capitol Hill has noticed, and lawmakers just tied future funding to hard proof the engine line can surge without coughing. Hill ultimatum, one more slip and the ax falls. Congress just cocked the hammer. Buried on page 343 of the Senate's fiscal year, 2026 National Defense Authorization Act report is a red line order. The Air Force must brief lawmakers by March 31, 2026, with a milestone by milestone plan to field tactically relevant quantities of HACM no later than 1st October 2029, complete with an industrial-based rescue plan and all funding needs spelled out year by year. Miss a date, and the committee will consider alternative investments. That warning lands as the GAO's June assessment flags HACM for busting its cost baseline and slicing test shots just to stay afloat. Capitol Hill's patience is evaporating. SASC staffers now call the program a one-strike-left case pointing to ARW's near death as the precedent. House appropriators fenced a chunk of fiscal year 26 RDT and E until a successful all-up round flight test proves the scramjet can do more than melt spreadsheets. Chief of Staff General Dave Alvin tried to calm the storm in last month's HASC hearing, hinting that the service might buy a handful of ARRWs as gap insurance while HACM stabilizes. But even that gambit drew side-eye from members who reminded him that Congress won't bankroll two lame horses. The message is blunt. Deliver data, not excuses. One more schedule slip and the Hill's reprogramming pen will raid HACM's $802 million pot for munitions that actually fly. The first flight test window opens this fall at Australia's Woomera range. If that scramjet lights clean, HACM gets a heartbeat. If it sputters, expect a budget bloodletting and a fresh Pentagon scramble to plug the Indo-Pak range gap. Ready for the countdown? HACM's sprint has turned into a tightrope walk, 12 years from contract to combat, a cost curve that won't stop climbing, just five chances to prove the scramjet, and one Senate deadline that reads like a guillotine. Yet the Pacific clock keeps ticking. China's H-6Ks already lug 1,500-kilometer Mach 6 killers, and new DF-27 gliders can hit Guam without leaving home airspace. 
Every month, HACM slips. That range gap yawns wider. This fall, all eyes shift south. Australia's Woomera Range hosts the first all-up HACM shot. Burner light off, Mach 6 cruise, live data link. One clean run buys the Air Force breathing room. One flame out hands Capitol Hill the hatchet it's itching to swing. Even a success won't fix the factory choke. Elkton is still the world's lone scramjet line, and its expansion hall won't open until 2028. Congress now demands proof that Northrop can triple output on command, or funding flows elsewhere. Meanwhile, ARRW staggers back from the grave, siphoning dollars and attention. Dual lines could hedge risk, or drain both programs dry if either coughs. So here's the cliffhanger. If Woomera disappoints, do lawmakers pivot to good enough sub-hypersonic jazz and yards and call the hypersonic race lost or double down on scramjets despite the burn? Drop your take in the comments, cut the cord, or floor the throttle. Either way, remember, physics doesn't care about paperwork, only velocity. The next test decides whether America's fastest dart finally lives up to its name or becomes just another speed record on the scrap heap.